We welcome you back to Planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. Big round of applause in order for this one after a nearly six month stay on the International Space Station. A SpaceX Dragon capsule carrying four astronauts splashed down early yesterday. Look at that off the northwest coast of Florida. Now this was the first nighttime splashdown for a U.S. crew in more than 52 years. That's a big old wow. This capsule will make history again this fall when it carries the first all civilian space crew into orbit for the first Inspiration4 mission. Mark Straussman introduces us to the four Americans who will be on board. Here's the crew. 255 feet above historic launch pad 39A, we met the crew of Inspiration4, the next astronauts to climb atop a rocket at SpaceX's launch tower. I mean, this is like totally sacred ground. Everyone who ever walked on the moon launched right from this facility. Jared Isaacman, the mission's commander, walked us down the crew access arm their gateway to the stars. Uh, There's your like jetway to the rockets. Isaacman is 38. At 16, he quit high school to form a payments technology company and became a billionaire. His hobby, owning and flying fighter jets. So when the new commercial era of space opened, you thought, I'm a customer? Well, I mean, I thought there would be a chance. Ignition, lift off. He's chartered a Crew Dragon spaceship. For three days, flying on autopilot, it will orbit more than 300 miles above Earth, higher than the space station. The nose cone will pop open for views that are out of this world. Isaacman paid SpaceX an undisclosed price for all four seats. Three will go to complete strangers. When I found out that Inspiration4 was going to be the first all civilian mission to space, well, then there's no chance that's going to be a bunch of fishing buddies going on a joyride. That's something of significance, of responsibility, um, and we were going to make it really special. Each seat will represent a human virtue. Isaacman's will be leadership. He donated two of the three remaining seats to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, specialists in pediatric cancers. St. Jude called me one day. They said they had something to talk to me about. Haley Arsenault's 29. This physician's assistant at St. Jude's would become the youngest American ever to fly in space. They asked if I wanted to go, and immediately I said yes. And then, you know, checked with my mom. She was on board. <laughs> um, and so I, I knew just from that moment that I was absolutely something, like a dream I didn't even know I had. This is Haley in 2002 as a patient at St. Jude's. She was 10, being treated for osteosarcoma, bone cancer. She recovered after chemo and surgery with a titanium rod in her left thigh bone. She now works at the same hospital that saved her life. Her seat in the capsule will represent hope. So we're going to call the St. Jude patients from space. They're going to see that somebody who is in their shoes, who also fought childhood cancer, can go to space, and I think it's really going to show them what they're capable of. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Cyan Proctor, aptly named, teaches science at a community college in Phoenix. Did you think your space dream was over? Oh, absolutely. The 51-year-old was once a finalist for NASA's astronaut program, but ultimately passed over. Proctor's ticket to space aboard Inspiration4 came by winning a contest for entrepreneurs. Her seat represents prosperity. You went from space not being in the stars to suddenly it was. I mean, what was that moment like? I'll never forget it. I make that analogy of either Willy Wonka and you open up the chocolate bar and there's the golden ticket, uh -huh. or, or Harry Potter learning he's a wizard. So Jared was the sorting hat for you. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Gryffindor, no, it's a dragon. I get to ride a dragon into space. This is where everybody got on their rocket to go. To. Chris Sembrowski, a 41-year-old engineer from Seattle, won the fourth seat through an online raffle to raise money for St. Jude's. He actually lost the raffle but a friend won and gave him the chance. Now that's generosity, the virtue his seat represents. And then I ran upstairs after the call and talked to my wife and said, honey, I, I'm gonna ride a rocket. And her response was, what? <laughs> and my daughter who was sitting there said, that's awesome, that's really cool, dad. The space flight will make history. Isaacman also hopes it makes money as a fundraiser for St. Jude's. His goal, raise $200 million for the hospital.
We have a responsibility to take care of some of these problems here on Earth if we're going to go and explore among the stars. And you've given $100 billion yourself. I have. Now, I know how lucky I've been in life. The ball's bounced my way many times. And some of these families have been dealt just a horrible hand in life. So we got to do something about it. That's why it has to be a, such a big initiative. For CBS This Morning, Mark Strassman at the Kennedy Space Center. I love that. Honey, mom, yeah. going to space. Going to space. I Jared love, Isaacman, though. What a, wow, remarkable. so and cool. That, I love all the thought he put into Me every too. single aspect of this mission. And they all match their stories, too. Exactly. The hope, the prosperity, the generosity, leadership. Wow. Yeah. It's a special thing. That little capsule on top of the giant rocket. It's yeah. mostly just rocket fuel. I was literally right. getting chills in the middle of that story. Would either one of you want to go? I definitely don't. I would I do it. Don't, but I, I admire do it. them. I would do it. And I'm you sure, would? Yeah, oh, for sure. And I'm sure Vlad Dutay would as well. He'll be here next, <laughs> yeah. and we'll ask him about it. Stay with us.